So I am a very, very much a fan of looking at what other countries do when they have sort of similar crises <laughs> as what we have had in this country. And it's very easy to look at other countries, what they've done. Very often there are similarities, but they're never like a complete, you know, one-to-one, 100% one, comparison. There are always, you know, differences here and there, renting different rules, all kinds of, you know, differences that can go on. But renting is easily one crisis. I think a lot of big cities in Europe can quite agree on landlords are really taking the piss. <laughs> and I think this is, I think, shared very, very much uh, sentiment across all of, of the, of not only just the UK, but all of Europe as well. And I have a, a friend, I've got, well, I've got a couple of friends up in, in Scotland, in particular up in Edinburgh. And one of my friends, their flat, I think it's above or below them, I can't remember that, but it doesn't matter. But the flat below them, he basically knows from now until probably uh, maybe April of next year, there's going to be no one in that flat because it's on Airbnb <laughs> and he knows it. He can, he can see it on Airbnb, but that property is now going to be empty. But think about it this way. If that was actually not a Airbnb property and it was an actual rental property, someone could be living in that property, renting out that property for the year, you know, and I think giving someone a, a sort of a more permanent home would be fantastic. And I've said there's a lot of stuff we can do to, first of all, uh, foster at least long term contracts and putting more of the power in a renter's uh, corner rather than the current situation we have in the UK that it is in the landlord's corner. So. That, and obviously, the big statistic comes up because someone will mention it in the chat that, yes, most MPs are indeed landlords. Um, <laughs> you know, you can't get around that fact. Um, so, you know, there is a bit of, you know, sort of bias, unfortunately, maybe when sort of they are discussing these types of rules and regulations. And you won't be surprised that most of those landlords are, of course, Tories. But, <laughs> you know, there you go. So what is going on in the Dutch? Because as you can see here, we're talking about a very experimental idea being put forward by, I think it's the Amsterdam City Council, to try and deal with what are essentially empty properties. People who just buy properties and then secretly say, oh yeah, there's someone living in it, when there isn't really someone living in it. They're used mainly as speculative properties. And this isn't just a, a problem in Amsterdam. I think this is sort of a problem all over Europe, as well as in the UK as well. Uh, certainly in London, it is a very, very big problem. So what have, they come up, what have they come up with? What idea is it? And could this work in the UK? Well, let's find out. But before we do that, please remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one of the link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way. As as well, there's the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there's the YouTube Pony Club you can join as well down below, where you get badges, emojis and whatnot as well. So over we go uh, to the dutchnews.nl. Uh, with their talk on this, with the title of The Crackdown on Empty Amsterdam Homes and Officers with Higher Landlord Fines. So Amsterdam is cracking down on landlords who leave their homes empty, almost doubling the penalties for not reporting a building vacant. The city said in a press release that the experimental policy is likely to run from December this year until the start of 2025 if it is passed, as is expected, by a council vote. Currently, homeowners are able to register with the city if their building is empty for more than six months. Under the 2016 legislation, the council has powers to order landlords uh, of office buildings and homes to take in a tenant if the building is empty for more than 12 months, under a threat of, of over €7,500 penalty. A city can then also determine the maximum rent. So this is something I think I would like to see. The idea of rent controlling being 
brought into a local council level. I think that could be a really fantastic move um, and certainly help keep rents uh, down in a lot of places. And it's something that hasn't really been discussed too much in the UK, but it could be quite a significant game changer when it comes to sort of the renting landscape here in the UK. So again, just another idea of something that could actually work here in the UK. But anyway, on to this about the fines. Uh, these new rules will mean that people who do not report their home or office vacant for six months will face a fine of over €4,500 for private homeowners and up to €2,500 and €9,000 for professional renters, currently up from €5,000. Uh, Zalos uh, Zita, Zita Pels, I think that's how you say it, the deputy mayor uh, charged with housing, said that it was important to simulate owners to rent out their properties right now. There is a high housing shortage in our city, and she said that in this current press statement, we have too few homes and many unnecessarily vacant. I am pleased that we can now add to try and tackle this better in this day and age. It is possible to understand why homes would be empty. So we are going to ensure that the homes are again able to be lived in. The rules are being introduced under the city's new crisis powers after discussion with local areas within the city. So, as you can see, I think that will work. I mean, we'll have to see what happens, of course. Um, we'll have to see how this sort of works out, but I think that's a fantastic thing that we could do. Certainly in London, I can see that working very well, uh, but that would have to, I suspect, first of all, the government would have to give powers to the local council to be able to do that. It's not beyond the realms of possibility, and I think any sort of future Labour government should be seriously looking at how we can, well, make the rental market more better for renters rather than sort of focusing on landlords. So I think that would be a very good move politically for uh, Labour going forward. So, uh, as always... Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Like I say, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and our off-station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, we'll see you all next time.